Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for ladies who like a bald spot. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. Tyler, what did we watch? Cody, we watched Black Adam. Yeah, we did. More specifically, I watched Black Adam like a month ago. And you you just watched Black Adam. Is that right? Yes. I'm looking at these notes. And I think I know what some of them are talking about. You know? I got to tell you, Cody, it's not that complicated of a movie. (laughs) So I think you can remember. I think you'll remember the big parts. You believe in me? I believe in you. I believe in your skills. Tyler, do you want to tell the people? Do you want to give them a little rundown? What's Black Adam all about? Yeah, so here, I'll I'll give you a rundown. Black Adam is uh, a movie about superheroes set in the D.C. EU, right? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what mm-hmm. it, the 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 DQ as they call it. You know, that's a it's a so it's about you got magic, you got wizards, you got lightning, mm-hmm. you got demons and wizard demons versus wizards. Age tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you got uh, you know this is the oldest. Uh, this is the original DCU movie. All right, that's what you got to understand going into it. Cody. Right. It's got uh-huh. the rock. All right. It's the movie about yeah. the rock and his journey to stardom. Okay. That's what it really is. It's, yeah. It's a metaphor for the meteoric rise of one Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. I mean, there's lots more details I wanted to go in. And then I realized like they might be spoilers for someone who is actually, here's the thing. I'll say this. I'm going to say this up front during my synopsis here, Cody. We're still in it. Mm-hmm. We're in the synopsis still, okay? Yeah. Everybody out there, you've probably heard, oh, this is laughably bad. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to tell you, this is one of the better DCEU movies, which is not mm. a high bar to set. Mm-hmm. But I think, as especially if you look at it as a fun action superhero movie, if you put it on like the in the lens of the movies coming out, like, when like Batman begins and stuff were coming out, I think this would have like wiped the floor with all those. No, get me wrong. I think the bat, the Nolan Batman movies are like grittier movies, but I do think this also has the, but it does benefit from the superhero polish of today. But I think this Mm -hmm. is like, if all the DC movies were this good, then it's would be viewed uh, the whole, like the EU wouldn't be getting restarted every other movie. Yeah, for sure. So it has to be hard to be making a, a DCEU when you have to pivot every 18 months. Cause yeah. like it takes like three years to make one of these movies. So like you're in the middle of making one of these movies and they're like, we're changing direction. It's like, right. But you understand how we're in the middle of making a movie from the last time you changed directions. Right. All right. That's enough. That's enough synopsizing. All right. sounds like you gave me your take. You said it was a solid, it was a good one. You liked it. Yeah, I mean, I thought because I went into it expecting it to be bad because everyone had said how bad it is. It's not my favorite DC movie, but I do. I think it's better than ones that I personally like more. Mm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like, I think sure. this has the polish of a Marvel movie, but not quite the. Uh, I think at its core, I think Marvel is a better universe. I think the original like founders of Marvel versus DC, like. DC so much older Marvel. I think they thought tried to think a little bit more about not making stuff sound dumb versus mm-hmm. the DC you guys, which are like, nah, who cares? But that also comes from they could look at DC and then say, all right, how do we make that not sound as dumb? Mm-hmm. So I think it well, comes from that too. Let me tell you, I don't know if this will surprise you, but I I enjoyed this one. I thought it was pretty good. <gasps> what? I wasn't like blown away like I am every now and again with Marvel, but uh, this was a solid one and I don't regret seeing it. And I thought, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne only has so much range. And I feel like they brought him in here and they said, we're going to aim for what in singing we call your tessitura, you know, like we know this is what you can do. Well, we're going to play to that. And they did it. And it was a pretty good one. Yeah, here's the thing, Cody. In this movie, 
began its journey in 2006. All right. I, no, stop. Did you know that? He was That's originally awful. announced <laughs> as playing Captain Marvel. And then Marvel, of course, was like, hey, no. It's like, look, your grandfathered in on Captain Marvel in the comics, but no, you can't have yeah. Captain Marvel here. And so then it, but The Rock was announced as playing the char- this character in this movie like 15 years ago. Yikes, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. So, it's well, uh, that that makes me have a lot of questions, but I think they're all questions I need to discuss within the realm of the spoiler zone. All right. So I'm so just to get it out, just to clarify, like we both seem like we're higher on it than the general consensus. Is that fair to say? Maybe I don't. I guess I don't know what the consensus is, but it sounds like maybe I've heard it's. I, I've only heard bad things from other people, and I was pleasantly really? surprised. Uh-oh. Uh oh. So, so Cody, do you want to just hop in my mystery machine van and just, yeah, get I the, absolutely hop do. Hop in yeah. the mystery machine, the non-brand specific mystery machine, and let's cruise on down to Spoiler Town, USA. All right, I love it. I'm in it. And I'm ready. Let's use small. Like, we only can play four seconds of several popular songs but you know we got enough popular songs cody the trip's gonna go by like that like just like that you know you're not even getting notes Mm. okay yeah tyler i'm gonna offer you the chance to kick us off only because i need you to remind me of everything that happened in this movie cody would it be surprise you to know that i actually took notes for this movie really you're out here overachieving Rare twist. I got the notes. So I am ready, Cody. Are you are you ready for me? I got my timer pulled up and everything. Here we I'm go. Ready. Here we go. Cody, my first note is this is some D and D nerd stuff, my guy. Because this is like like what the heck? Like the way like I can't even remember any specific line, but like the way they're teeing it up and they're like mm, in the beginning in the Times before the times, the 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 tetrahedron gathered the powers of the universe, and I was like, "This is some stuff." All right, this is like, yeah. what are we talk? You are like seven movies deep into your supposed like Avengers knockoff, and like, come on, man! Like, first off, you already established what these wizards are. I don't feel like they needed to. They didn't explain the wizards, I guess, but they had to. Like every time they have a DC, a DC, look at me. Every time. You start a new movie. You have to reintroduce the universe because your characters all come from different universes. You got to figure this out. OK. And also, just as another side note, since we're in the spoiler territory, why did you make a movie where you exclusively used the <laughs> the B list version of Marvel heroes? Why? You've got your own heroes. OK. Like, I understand Shazam, Shazam is like a very rich like universe i know lots of people that are huge fans of that whole like all the characters in it because you all here's what you do you just put different people in suits with lightning bolts on their chest all right the flash shows up and he makes a quirk then he's gone to kidnap more people okay that's all you need from him okay you just need to say dude take a break from kidnapping for five minutes we need you here okay they they got real preachy real fast okay they got real like you're imperialist pigs and then they're like but then they had it do it to an australian which i feel like why is australians why are australians catching strays all right here's what i found here's what i remember my brothers they were in the army all right they served alongside these australians and they were terrified of them okay these my (laughs) they were like they were hardcore dudes right but also like if you're good if you're interacting with a random pmc dude i feel like you're gonna flip a coin you're either gonna get a russian or an american so i feel like you're you're just why Cody why is Australia catching strays that's all I want to know a justice for Australia okay Cody this movie feels like it's been in production for 15 years I'll be honest with you when I was watching it and they're doing all the stuff I'm like this feels like it's been through like that writer's room like once or twice a year for 15 years like they're just constantly <laughs> rewriting it and it's like there's some parts where it's like this is very much from the early 2000s and then there's other parts that are like oh this is meant to like this was written post endgame all right and like mm-hmm. in the new age of superhero movies 
And I felt like if they had just not done that, it would have been a better movie overall, right? Here's my question to you. I asked this. I said, is the robe super? And then two notes later, the cape is not super because it had holes in it. But he got shot several yeah. times without the cape getting holes in it. And I wanted, oh, I want answers. And there's no one at the DC where I can just point to and say, give me, an-. there's no Feige that I can be like, listen, Feige, give me answers. Okay. Here's what I would it, look. Okay, Cody, I just, I need all these PMC nerds because they're all, you know, private military corporation, right? That's the, that's the bad guys in the black suits with the, with the guns. That's what they are in all these movies. If it's a, if it's a generic bad guy military dude, that's a PMC, Cody. They're everybody's favorite bad guys, right? Cause we all hate them. They betrayed us in, in Call of Duty more times than we can count. So now we all hate them, all right? If bullets don't work in the first five seconds of unloading into a guy, they're not going to work. All right. Can we agree mm-hmm. on that? Can we just agree that that's the truth, that that's the that's the truth that they need to live by? All right. If you all empty a magazine into this guy and he's not down, guess what? Emptying another magazine into him, it's not going to do anything. At that point, you need to get out. You got to run. It's not worth it. I know you're making a quarter million dollars a year to live there. But look, man, you know, just go home. Get on back on the boat. Head on back to adelaide and just live your life in australia you're a sweet boy you don't need this kind of heat okay Cody. I, oh no <laughs> what is this tron tell me if you know what i'm talking about i'll tell you what i'm talking about they have these tron bikes that fly all right and they want to act like they're not tron bikes and they're like they don't even make the boom, 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 sound why are you gonna give me flying bikes without giving me the classic flying vehicle sound all right this you know i just Justice Society? Thanks. I hate it. I understand it's probably from the old days and you're like, well, we don't want to do Justice League. I hate the Justice Society. That's like them making an Avengers movie and being like, look, we're the super friends. And it's like, no, you've got you've moved past it. Don't go back to it. Don't belittle yourself. Don't throw us back in the past. All right. We're in the future. All right. Oh, Tyler, I'm going to have to cut you off right there. Mostly because you started taking away some of my notes there at the end, all right? It's not allowed, all right? No, no. These are my notes. I worked hard on them, and I'm going to start right now. All right, bonus fun fact. I also hate Justice Society, and I just found out it was the original super team. The very first documented super team in 1940 is the Justice Society of America. Oh, you boned yourself when you said just the Society of America. When you added of America, you immediately stopped sounding cool. All right. It never sounded cool to begin with, but you ruined your, you, you blew it. All right. You straight up, you blew it. Here's the thing about this movie. Not since like uh, an X-Men movie with Quicksilver. Have we seen this much slow motion in a movie? You know what I'm saying? They went all in on slow motion. I'm not. I'm not mad about it, but it was a very bold choice. It was a bold decision. You know, they leaned in enough that it was like, maybe, maybe it works. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it works. We're going to have to talk about this. All right. But it's fine because I think they went for the slow-mo. They went for the spectacle. This movie kind of reminded me a little bit of Zack Snyder's Justice League where they like shot it in four, three. And they're like, no, we're going to frame these super people big. It's, they're going to look big and imposing and super like big comic book panels. You know, that's very much what they did in this movie, which I, I kind of liked because it kind of made a statement and uh, Marvel doesn't do that as much, you know? And I feel like they were trying to do something a little different, a little fresh. And I think that kind of, it gave it a, a certain uh, style they were going for. So that, so that worked. Okay. Look, the starter characters, the starter pack characters we got, the main human characters, you know, they they sucked. All right. They weren't good. Didn't like them. Didn't care about them. I liked that the kid had a skateboard. He was like a Middle Eastern Bart Simpson in that way, you know, and aside from him being a skateboarder, I could have taken or leave in any one of them. You know, they were fine. They had their moments, you know, the big guy, he had his moments where he was like, it's kind of funny, you know, I like, it's fun. That's it. Aside from the the laughs they provided, I was like, you know, you don't need to be here. You want to know why? Because we got great heroes, okay? Pierce Brosnan's here, Hawkman's here, the big, big small man that is definitely is an Ant-Man, except that he is. And of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is here. I liked all the heroes. I thought they were great. And, you know, I just think, 
We could have done with a few less random humans, but the heroes are great. Furthermore, you know, we see a lot of movies with costumes. We see a lot of superhero movies and they're going for costumes and they're, they're pretty good these days. But I will say, I thought they did an excellent job on the superhero costumes in this movie. In particular, I want to talk about Hawkman. All right, Hawkman, I loved his costumes. His big wings, his big old metal helmet, and his big old spinny mace. It, uh, it looked great. I thought they did a really good job with the costumes. I really enjoyed them. I think that was a big strength of the movie, you know? And I will say this. I don't know if it was like the most amazingly well-written movie of all time or super movie of all time. You kind of talked about it felt like it had been through every writer room, you know, once a year for the last 15 years. But I will say, you know, they went for their own thing. They were like, what if someone was as strong as Superman but didn't care if uh, people were like thrown 300 feet in the air? And it was a lot of fun to watch. It was a lot of fun to just watch bodies fly off into the distance. Um, and I really enjoyed him trying to figure out his catchphrase and he would like throw the body and be like, oh, right. <laughs> he would, like try to say his catchphrases when he's like, oh, well, you know, it was a good running gag, but I just appreciated how many times like the other superheroes were horrified and like the villains were horrified. Like everybody was like, oh my God, this guy doesn't care. He has zero Fs to give and we better not mess with him, you know, but they still mess with him. So they didn't learn their lesson. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about they needed to they were chasing down the tron bikes and they're like all right we need hostages we need someone we can question he's like what happened to the guy on your bike he's like uh he didn't make it <laughs> like he like just murdered this dude he's like he didn't make it you know You're like it's there were some good gags all right i appreciated that what was you know there's some good laughs i liked it what was the one where he's like you know the rock says his snarky thing and he's like that was sarcasm and then pierce Brosnan's like technically just a lie but it's fine. You're getting it. You know, you're going to figure it out. I appreciated his character interacting with the normal people. Also, um, let's talk about the thing I hated the most and you hated the most. And um, that'll lead me right to the end of my time. All right. Teth Adam. All right. His original name was Teth Adam. And you know what it sounds a lot like? Death Adam. And I didn't realize till the end of the movie that they weren't saying Death Adam the whole time. But it's fine because they changed it to Black Adam. I hated that. Am I crazy? Uh, no, nah, that was fine. You know, it was fine. Teth Adam. That would be, you know what I'm saying? It's bad. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's very confusing for me. Oh, but it's fine. Though. You know, it's I thought fine. they changed his name from Death Adam to Black Adam. And I was like, I guess, whatever. Just pick a name and deal with it. Okay. No, nah, yeah, no. Nah. I mean, they changed his name from <laughs> Teth Adam to Black Adam. You know, that's what they changed his name to. It never really bothered me. I would say, uh, you know what I thought <laughs> I do have a note here that say they're like, you know, it's Hawkeye, right? He's gathering the team, which I do like. I appreciate the inclusion of Hawkeye as the dude. I also liked his little like, you know, when Dr. Fate's like, oh, you're going to die. And he has his little smirking like, I don't fear death. And it's like, oh, because we know Cody, we know Hawkeye's or Hawkeye. Hawkman's thing, you know, like that he doesn't care if he dies, right? He's die, he dies all the time, right? That's the thing. Mm -hmm. We've all mm -hmm. seen Justice League. Oh, sorry, Justice Society of America. It's like if they were like, look, we're gonna make a thing. Here's what we're gonna do: the Justice League of Super Acquaintances. That's like it's like they did that. <laughs> IJLSA, well, you know everybody's favorite superhero team. It's also kind of like when Hydrox came out and they're like, what if we named a cookie that sounds like it's bleach? And then Oreo came out and was like, what if we called it Oreo? And then everyone's like, yeah, you're right. That is better. Hydrox, you go hide in the corner, you know? I'm gonna you be can't be the you. originator of the super team and like have the worst name because someone, someone newer and hotter is going to come out and take you down, you know? Yeah, but aren't these the same people who then changed it to super friends? So, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like that's what I'm saying. Like, I think we give Marvel a lot of credit, but really it's just guys that are like, hey, so this stuff's all dumb, right? Let's just make a cool version of it. And then they ended up through right. decades making their own thing be kind of dumb, right? Uh-huh. But so I did, I did like Hawkman. I will say this might be a hot take, Cody. Hawkman's <laughs> outfit looked the goofiest. Of all of them. <sighs> but I liked it. It was good. I think it's like I the best the you can do with Hawkman. 
And it's I do yeah. I liked his wings better than I think they looked better than um Falcon from yeah, Marvel. From the from Marvel. Yeah, like I think his wings, his suit, I think it was a direct like we can do it better, which I I liked their suits. I think all of their suits, I think even like Adam Smasher, I liked his suit better than Ant Man's. But again, though they're it's like mm. comparing their both based on the original, like the comics. Yeah. So you know it's but I did think it was funny that they're like, okay, you both have these super deep rosters of people, and you picked your version of Ant Man. I, I, well, I was like Storm, but I, it felt like the way she used her powers, they really much were wanting her to be like Scarlet Witch in the yeah. early Avengers movies. And so it's like, yeah, Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange <laughs> Ant Man, Scarlet Witch, and Falcon. So it's yeah. like, you're throwing out, you're like, your B tier people here. Yeah. Well, in a movie that's supposed to be this. like an A tier movie. Who could we throw out? I mean, I don't know that many DC heroes, but like, who would you, you know, name three to five DC heroes that are like, hey, these haven't been in the MCU recently, their equivalents that could have made a good super. Let's call them, let's call them um, the super guys and gals that are um, work together. That'll be their team name. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I don't know, like the, I mean, I mean, I don't Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter, yeah. Uh, he would be my A-list Cyborg guy. might be a good one. Well, I wouldn't pull, like... Just for the sake of... All Cyborg's of the, too big. But I'm just yeah. saying, like, I Martian Manhunter could have been the Dr. Fate character, right? I like Dr. Fate a lot, so that's kind oh, of... I mean, I wouldn't replace him. I'm just I saying if Dr. you're trying Fate. to get someone more differentiated from MCU. Yeah, but I will have... I have a confession. Dr. Fate yeah. is one of my favorite DC characters. Like I thought he was great, and so Pierce Brosnan he's cool. was great. Yeah, he think, was great. I've always thought of him as like the reason I like Doctor Strange is because of Doctor Fate. Like in my mind, Doctor Strange mm-hmm. is the store brand Doctor Fate. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, because they have the almost exact same power set, but Doctor Fate is much more like God tier than Doctor Strange being like I don't know what's going on. I just, uh, sparks go, and then that you know he's yeah. just barely holding it together. You know, whereas Dr. Fate's like, no, I know what's going on. And I'm just going to try to nudge everything in that direction. Anyway, I always liked him. I thought he was really cool. And I think Pierce Brosnan was like the per when he had his mask on and had his like came floating down. Um, And he's like Black Adam. And he says that like I was watching it on my TV and like our, we have a giant subwoofer that like his voice. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yes maybe yeah. i was very excited when he came down with his mask on and everything but i liked also that their suits seemed even though there was a lot going on with some of them i like that um at least the cost like the suit designers for dc are they keeping it simpler than marvel is marvel sen- seems to be like no no we're gonna get complicated and now recently they're like mm, let's simplify the suits whereas dc's like no no Let's just make a cool looking suit and like Mm -hmm. have it be simple. Go after like the, you know, like let's look at the original suit for this character, which is usually just going to be like a colored spandex with maybe some accents on it and kind of go off of that. Speaking of suits. Yeah. Are you aware that they have padding? That'd be a good one. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody likes Beast Boy. Um, Are you aware that they put padding in all the suits? So they had padding in the Black Adam suit and he said he put Mm. it on and it looked stupid. So they took it out. So all the muscles are his, obviously, because he- yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Which mean, is it, funny. It, it, like, who who thought you would need padding in the rock suit? I don't know. If there's one human being on this earth that has the physique to be a superhero, it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Like he's the one. You know, yeah. There's one person who could pull it off. It's him. Yeah, which I and I even saw like some videos of him saying like he, which is funny because he, you know, is known for working out aggressively all the time, even when he's not trying to be big for a role. He's all like he likes working out. Yeah. And that he to hear him talk about this, that he did the same thing everybody else does when they get like ready for a role. Like he's like, I went to the gym more and like ch- like he changed his diet, went yeah. to the gym more like he tried to get wow. his big as he's ever been and he says it is they're like that's the biggest he's ever been in his life which is saying mm-hmm. something for the rock it reminds me of like um the interviews with uh hugh jackman when he was getting ready for the wolverine 
where he's like mm-hmm. he, he wanted it to be when he was like doing his like Wolverine roar and all flexing. He wanted you to be like, oh, f. Yeah, <laughs> like he wanted you to be scared of him. Mm-hmm. And the Rock's got the same thing, but uh, yeah. So I mean, I thought it looked great. I like the Shazam suits though. I like that they're simple and they look good. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I like that. Let's talk about the Shazam thing because that, uh, I had to explain it to Bailey. I was like, no, it's the wizard. Cause remember the wizard when we watched Shazam that he's just his answer is the same wizard. And mm-hmm. right. That threw me. I didn't know he was in, I don't know that much about DC stuff anyway, but I had no idea that wizard hit him. I didn't know he had other champions and stuff, but it makes sense. But man, it was one of those things where you were like, just because the DC, EU hasn't been that unified. I'm like, oh, we're double dipping on wizard guy. I was not ready for it. <laughs> well, I kind of like because it's the whole premise. It threw me right? too that he uses the same name. He says Shazam. To do well, that's powers. the wizard's like, name. Yeah, right. I know. So that's the whole thing. But wizard yeah, you know. So, but you get you get why it threw me right. Yeah. But it's the same wizard. But you get why it threw me. It threw me like. Black Adam threw so many uh, random paramilitary dudes, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I, so one of the things I liked about it was, you know, the, when you see the wizard in Shazam, <clears throat> like the, the Shazam movie, right. And he's like old and haggard. And it's like, he's like, there used to be a bunch of us. Now it's just me and I'm going, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm about to kick it boy. You know? And he talks about like, he impresses upon him the importance of being good and all that, you know? it gives a lot more weight to that because you see them give like the wrong person, get their power and ends up killing mm-hmm. all but one of them and him having yeah. to imprison him. And so like, it gives more weight to that. So I was like, that's a cool way to like, I wish the DC would do more of that stuff with their super complicated backstory stuff where it's like, you can just say it like you can say the craziest stuff in a superhero movie and just, people will just accept it as long as it just makes, it doesn't make zero sense. You can have it be like, my, my name is nugget and I'm here to give you the sword of destiny (laughs) and not explain what the sword of destiny is. And then in another movie, have a nugget reappear well before he gives it, you know, and then this is what the sword of destiny is, you know, like you can explain (laughs) my name. Nugget. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Because you also, they'd benefit, right? Cause like, in Shazam, they made the joke of like Shazam being a dumb thing to say for superpowers when they didn't. So yeah. they didn't have to make the joke in this one. It was like, no, no, we all know it's dumb. We all know it's kind of goofy. It's a kid's thing. Like, get over it, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I do think it's funny. Like all the marketing and stuff. So the marketing before this, there were so many cringy marketing things that looked way worse than they needed to it all made me think like this movie's about to look awful but it looked really good except there was some weird cg stuff Mm -hmm. like but i would say honestly in my opinion the worst looking cg thing was um small rock like when they had to take yeah that was the that was the main for me that was like the main kind of uncanny thing we're like okay this is i think all they needed to do was shrink his head a little bit they were using the same technology uh, for they did for Captain America, the first Avenger. Yeah. But, you know, we're like this. That was 12 years ago, you know, Yeah, which is the same thing there. Like if they had shrunk his head 10 percent, I feel like that wouldn't have looked weird. And if they'd shrunk the rocks head, maybe even 5 percent, it would have looked less weird because it's not like the guy. I think what they should have done is had him be the size the rock was like when they announced it, when he was just a wrestler. You know, because yeah. he was still a big dude. You could still have him be mm-hmm. a big. He was still a pretty big, muscular guy. But then you've also got to account for the fact that his head is bigger, it seems like, than it was back then. And maybe take some of the veins out with CG, you know? Like, mm-hmm. uh, you just got to make him look like his face, like he isn't flexing 24 7. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, overall, like, I think the effects looked really good. It is interesting, right? That uh, I felt. I the impact of him throwing the guys and killing all these dudes reminded me a lot of Winter Soldier. Like you mm. remember seeing that in, tr- in theaters and the like the hearing Captain America hit someone with their, his shield and you're like that guy's dead. At best yeah. he's paralyzed. 
and he's yeah. like throwing people off of boats into the ocean like in the middle of the pacific ocean and stuff it's like so that guy's dead captain america just killed somebody uh-huh and it was like it, it was uh you know it was like more impactful because they kind of tiptoed around it for so long and that's, i i felt very similar with this one where it's like oh no the kills felt beefier you know mm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah for sure um i did see this was rated r the first time they did it <laughs> because they were like some really gruesome deaths i guess and they, they had to take out a bunch of them so they could get the pg-13 rating but i yeah. could get you could tell that was kind of the vibe there it felt kind of like deadpool suicide squad were like no we want these dudes to get torched but then they kept it pg-13 but I would have seen an R-rated version of this, but the few more, you know, yeah, a little more juice flowing, some guts and uh, whatever. But I mean, obviously they wouldn't do that. But uh, I agree. I think it, you know, it's one of those things where when you see the movies, you're like, oh, they're the good guys. They're just trying to knock people away. And I just liked it in this one. He's like, no, nah, I'm doing what I want to do, which is a uh, squoosh this dude. You know, like I'm not messing around here. We're just getting him. Yeah, taking care of him. So it was it was a cool to have like an anti hero where he's just like, nah, I'm out here to wreck people. Yeah, and because he's, I mean, he's similar to Venom, right? But done way better than Venom was. You know. Uh, yeah. I I liked that they tried to highlight the um, kind of ridiculous nature of the superhero rhetoric when they're mm-hmm. like telling him like, oh no, you know, like they have that moment where Hawkeye's like given his speech and it like cuts away from him and back to him. And he's still like, dude, it's like, I don't know what these guys have done, but they need to be tried by due process. And then it cuts to black Adam, like killing more guys where it's like, <laughs> there's no due process here. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. And it just, cut, it, so I thought it was very interesting them playing with that a little bit where it's like, no, no. And then, you know, like them getting called out a few times. I'm like, yeah, no, you guys, you know, you guys don't co- have never come here to help us before. Like you, in your minds, it's like, no, no, this is a peaceful place because we're like oppressed by this, by this, mm-hmm. which also like the thought, which I was also think is funny. The thought of just a, a random, like paramilitary group, just, conquering a country with no repercussions is kind of like <laughs> like i don't know if even in the like the real world some stuff like that can like happen but like an entire country getting taken over by a private military group like that seems a bit you know like someone should you think someone would be like hey what's going on here what's going on yeah. over there you guys uh you guys uh doing bad stuff but I just think it's funny that they're like, oh, yeah, they've invaded. I also like how they're like, oh, yeah, the techno gang or whatever they were called. And then they're like on yeah. their Tron bikes flying through the city. I was like, is this a <laughs> biker gang that conquered this country? Is that what we're going for? So for like the first 20 minutes, I was like, oh, my gosh, a biker gang took over their country. This is the most like 60s like comic book storyline ever. Oh, <laughs> They're real bad dudes. They all wear leather jackets and they dance fight. You know, that's what I thought was about to happen. Oh, no. Yeah, it was. It had it had a little bit of that going on. Um, You know, something else I did like about this one was the the way they developed the origin story. I thought it was actually a really good way to do it because they kind of show the origin story. Then they show it again in the middle and they're like, no, this is what actually happened. And at mm-hmm. the end, they're like, no, this is what really happened. You know, so you kind of see it from, oh, this is what they think Black Adam was. And then Black Adam's like, well, really, it was more like this. And then by the end, you're like, oh, it was his son who was the hero. And he was given the mantle because his son saved his life, you know. And so was, I just like that you kind of show those different um, perspectives of the story. And each time you like learn more about the character. So I think, you know, ever since like Spider-Man came out in 2002 and, you know, for the next decade, it was like all about the origin story. And then we got sick of that. And then they tried to find more interesting ways to do it. I thought this was actually a really pretty creative way to have a good origin story for the person and see it, see him come to be a hero, you know? Yeah. I like how they even had the, the giant statue kind of change subtly. Mm-hmm. with each retelling where it's like oh at first it's like oh yeah no that's definitely the rock and then it was like oh no that is the it's the other guy it's his son as mm-hmm. uh the hero you know Shaz- i guess it would be they would he was shazam mm-hmm. <laughs> you know 
Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I liked that. That was like some of those things that like the subtle little touches, I, you know, and even his, uh, you know, the, even, I mean, this is very subtle, but like his suit changing and all that with him, mm-hmm. whether or not he was using his rage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that for sure. I enjoy it. Like I said, there are quite a few good gags in the movie. I really liked him trying to figure out his catchphrase. And he's like, no, no, you have to say it before you kill him, you know, and doing the whole thing. Yeah. He's like, don't tell me, tell them before you kill them. <laughs> I will say, you know how, like we talked about, um, like their, 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 uh, store brand version of Marvel heroes and stuff. But like, I really do think that they kind of nailed it at the same time. Like I am amazed mm. at how like with like Adam Smasher for one, I was like, they kind of nailed not like, which does also, it draws a lot of comparisons too, right. That where it's going to be hard to win this, but the same, even the same humor that Ant-Man had where it's like, mm. cause if you do think about it, like Ant-Man calls it out in a few movies where he's like, all I do is get, you know, it's like the same thing with like Hawkeye being in these giant superhero battles, and he's like, I'm just a dude mm-hmm. with a bow, you know, like calling out the ridiculous. Yeah. Or, or even, but I did think the Adam Smasher making like asking for snacks and stuff was like, I'm like, mm. I mean, Ant Man made that same kind of thing where it's like, oh, it takes a lot of energy to get big. It's like, I don't think I probably would have taken that <laughs> piece of dialogue out where it's like, maybe don't repeat the same lines as Ant Man. You know, we all know you're yeah. the same character. You know, and one of you is uh-huh. copying the other. But I thought uh, I liked him. I even have a note that says Al's a good boy and I love him. Yeah, he's a good boy. He is a good boy. He's a sweet boy. He's just out there trying to help and smashing through ancient statues and being like, I'm sorry, is that expensive? <laughs> but it's funny because, I mean, he's like the, you know, like I feel like a good superhero movie has a kid that doesn't that's like way over his head, you know? Mm-hmm. on all these where it's like no no you're super you're here you can fight with us and shazam is usually in justice league type stuff shazam fills that role a lot so it's yeah funny to have someone else do it in a shazam attached movie um but yeah have them be kids and then have like the two most ancient people in the dc universe <laughs> um be like the other two on the team i was i thought that was an interesting way to do it you know mm-hmm. um here's my question where, where were these wizards when Steppenwolf was showing up? All right. These guys are supposed to be protecting the world. Where are these guys? Where are they? What the heck? It's not even like, oh, the, you know, it's like on Marvel, you're like, where are the Eternals when Thanos was messing up stuff? And it's like, oh, well, we can only fight the Nuggets, you know, or whatever. That's where <laughs> Nugget comes from, right? <laughs> but like, yeah. these wizards are supposed to be like, no, no, we defend the world from threats, which I. <laughs> I looked up the power hierarchy, the hierarchy of power in the DC universe. Yes. Okay. Just to see top 10. <laughs> these guys were not on it. Guess who the most powerful person in the DC universe is Cody. Go on hazard. A guess For the heroes, J- the most powerful characters. Cause that's what I did. Superman. First. Oh, you dumb. No, it's God. Cody, of course it's God. <laughs> Who's the second most powerful. That's right. Michael, the Archangel. Who's the third most? That's right, the Devil. Hold on, hold on. Who's number four? Is there a God comic? Be real, be real with me. So it's called the Presence. Is there a God DC comic? I don't think that I can follow the adventures of God. I don't know Elohim. I don't know where it is, but it's the Presence is what it's called. What the Uh. the character is called, but it's like in all the explanations, it's like yeah, no, the Presence is God. Basically, it's like. The DC's universe of the Abrahamic God is what all the things said, where it's like an omnipotent, mm. all powerful thing that created the universe. And then Michael's the chief servant of it, but it's a different character, you know? And it's like, oh, and then there's literally Lucifer, who's the devil, the enemy of the presence, you know? And it's like, so it's like all these characters, basically, like, who's the most powerful characters in the Bible? That's the most powerful characters in. <laughs> In the DC universe, and I was like, "All right, DC bunch of oh my gosh, that's too funny! I can't." (laughs) And then a couple of them are heroes, so it's like idiot. No, it's God. Yeah, (laughs) obviously. So it's like, so I did finally Um, narrow it down, and I scrolled past. It's like, hold on, I'm like, who's your favorite DC character? Mine's Batman. Mine's Allah. (laughs) Like, okay, well, 
<laughs> are we having fun anymore if we're in, in comic book universe and we're still subject to the same deities? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> all right. But when I scroll down, I know like uh, Shazam's up you know, there. So I was like, what's your favorite so, book? And it's like, yeah. mine's Pride and Prejudice. Mine's the Bible. It's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. well, you were no, right, you were zero fun. You were the least fun person. But I know oh. Shazam is above. Uh, my favorite? No, uh, I'm not done. My favorite superhero is obviously God. And my second favorite is Michael. Yeah, they're the they're the All team right, of powerful. On. You know why would you not like them? I'm over it. <laughs> just I thought it was just so funny. I was like, come on, because like, if you do the same thing for Marvel, you do end up with God characters, but they're like way more like oh you know these guys but they i was like this bolt dc is just like no no there's a guy at the top and then the rest of them that can't be beat i was like well that's fair i guess so the uh on this one according to everybody's favorite site collider Hmm. hold on i scrolled way too far and i you know like the ads Mm -hmm. wait a second (laughs) This is something I scrolled into a different list. It said uh, Joker, and I was like, you're I don't think it. this is the most powerful. Uh, you're the in presence, it now. The presence was next El- Elaine Belloc, who's the successor to the throne of heaven. All right, daughter of Michael. Yes, uh, yeah. there you go. Lucifer, right? Oh, everybody's the endless who I didn't even read anything about him. Superman Prime is the one you get the first. Who it, Gold Superman, Super Saiyan Superman. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I'll fight you if you say it's anything different. Okay. Darkest night, the specter who's also part of the the heaven stuff. There's a whole heaven, I think, storyline, you know, so you got to scroll past all that. Okay. That's the thing. That's what you got to do. Okay. Um, Dr. Manhattan, right. is usually like when you get into like normal characters because they've been folded in to the normal DC universe. I was like, Dr. Mm. Manhattan's also kind of like God. Though, right at the top of his game. He's from Watchmen, right? Yeah. Blue so, Man. This one, here we go. Now we've hit Superman. Who's right below Superman? That's right. Lex Luthor. Then Dark Side. What? <laughs> what? Guess what? If you're rich, you're more powerful than Dark Side. Lex Luthor. <laughs> then Black Adam. Then Wonder what? Uh, uh, Lex Luthor? I hate it. Cody. I hate this list. <laughs> Most of the good this ones, though, sucks. have like Shazam up high. The, the, although the ones that usually put Shazam above will put Wonder Woman at number one. And I'm like, that you're mm. just doing it because Superman's weak to magic for some reason. And her, mm. her lasso can get him. But also, here's the real answer, Cody. Everybody out here is like, oh, man, who's more stronger? Black Adam, Shazam, Superman? I feel like it's up to the comic book writer, the DC universe people, the DCEU, the DQ people have the made Qs. it clear Superman's stronger. At the end of the day, if they fought in a to the death brawl, Superman wins. That's I, sorry to say nerds, but that's what the writers have decided. So that's what the truth is. Do we agree on that? Yeah, that's true. They've decided Henry Cavill is the hottest. Therefore, he's the most powerful. Yeah. Is the hottest. Just think about him for a second. Just imagine him with oh. his hairy chest that he pushed for, mm-hmm. mind you. He pushed for that hairy mm-hmm. chest. I watched a whole interview series where they were asking him about him, you know, cocking his fists. Yeah. And how he did it the first take in Mission Possible. Then he's like, then I got nervous and didn't do it the second. And the director's like, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on cut. Where was the, where was the, where was the fist thing? Where was that? And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Just, you know. He's like, do it again. <laughs> it like made it stopped several takes because oh, he didn't man. load his fists before the fight. You gotta load. You gotta load the fists up. You know, otherwise they don't work. It's like, <laughs> what? Do you fire a gun without loading it? No. Yeah. You don't throw a punt without loading your fists. So uh, yeah, so it was just funny because it was like everybody. Henry Cavill's gonna come out here and throw <laughs> blanks. No, no. way. <laughs> but it was. It was not just him. It was also like interviews with the director, with co-stars, all like, yeah, he did that. We were all like, oh, my gosh, that was awesome. Which I'm like, yeah, it is awesome. Right. Universally, we can agree. Henry Cavill cocking his fists for a fight is the coolest thing in the world. Right. Yeah. And he's Superman. So why doesn't he cock his fists as Superman? 
because then he would kill whoever he punches Cody. He couldn't survive. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Tyler, I figured I figured out a new one. Yeah. You know, remember when The Rock decided I'm no longer The Rock, I want to be Dwayne Johnson. And he made a big deal about it for a while. And now I feel like he's like, whatever, it's fine, whatever you want to call me. But he prefers Dwayne Johnson. Mm-hmm. Well, I still want to say something in the I still want to call him Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I figured out a great way to fix it. So you're not calling him The Rock, but you still get as it's Dwayne The Wayne Johnson. All right. Bailey and I were trying to say his name and we said Wayne Johnson. Like, That's not right. And like Wayne the Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne the Wayne Johnson. I want to nominate as the new full name of, uh, of the rock. I have an interesting tidbit about this, Cody. About Dwayne the Wayne Johnson. While watching the other videos about the fist cocking and such, you know, right. A lot of these like uh-huh. celebrity interviews pop, pop it up on my YouTube, right. And I saw one where he talks about him, like when he made the big deal about not being the rock anymore. They talk about it was uh-huh. his uh so like his Hollywood agents and stuff were like, you got it, the rock's dead, the rock's in the past. Now it's Dwayne Johnson. And he's like then he re so when he like then he's changed, he got rid of those people, apparently. Mm-hmm. Now he's like, Yeah, no, it's the the rock's here. The rock's right here. You wanna call me the rock? I'm the rock. You know? And I was like, That's interesting that they were like, No, no, you gotta leave this wrestling stuff. They're trying to rebrand him away from the wrestling thing, and but like that's part of his thing. Yeah, which that was his whole thing. That's what made him a star. So why would you throw it away? You know? Yeah, which that's exactly what he said. He's like, he didn't want to like leave that behind. um, It's like Chad Ocho Cinco. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing his name because I guess he's, he does like a little fan segment for the World Cup. I forget what his, I don't even remember what his like given last name is because he has legally changed his name to Chad Ocho Cinco so that on his football uniform, it could say Ocho Cinco. Which, if you don't know, translates to eight five, and do you, would you be surprised to know that his number on his jersey is eighty five? Anyway, my point is, I don't even know what his last name is. He has become Ocho Cinco, you know, yeah. and you just got to embrace it. This man has been retired from football for at least twenty years, and to this day, he's still Chad Ocho Cinco. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You just if you get a cool it, nickname, you, know? you keep it. So yeah. we're going to do a poll. Well, let's come up with a cool nickname for me and a not as cool nickname for Tyler so that I can feel good about myself. And, uh, you know, go ahead and throw that up on our Twitter at Opinion Havers. You can throw up, pose, you know, propose a nickname. And I will change my whole life and personality to fit it, you know? But Cody, you've already got a nickname. It's right there. It's your username. We just start calling you. MZL? No, Cody. Embrace the fullness, okay? Mopey Zoo Lion. Mopey underscore zoo underscore lion. Oh, we went to the zoo this week, all right? And I saw a real life IRL Mopey Zoo Lion, all right? There were two of them. They they weren't Mopey. They were sleepy. I saw some SZL, some sleepy zoo lions. Have you ever watched a lion lick its paws for two minutes? Because I did, and it was delightful. It's just like a cat would do, but its paws are so much bigger and so much meatier. You know, like in Lion King when like Scar's playing with the mouse and you're like, that's not what lion paws are like. It is. That's what they're like. And he's licking his paws. It was a good, was a good time. I had a lot of fun watching that lion. They are big boys, you know? They're, well, it's funny because we saw the cheetah. Then we saw the lion. And you're like, the cheetah's tiny. The cheetah's like a house cat. Yeah. The lion is like. Cheetahs are so slim. They're so slender and short. Lions are just, they're chunky boys. It's like, it's like Dwayne Johnson when he was in his like slave form versus when he was Black Adam. That's the difference in terms of meatiness, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. They also, the cheetahs, they meow, you know? Isn't that fun? Oh, my goodness. I forgot about that. They do, Mm -hmm. don't they? They do. Cody, can I talk? Let's talk about this for a second. So Black Adam, right? He comes in. He's got his power. He's messing these guys up, right? He's doing yeah. some damage to mm-hmm. the to the vault and then maybe to some places. But the heroes that are coming, being like, "This guy is going to destroy the world. We have to stop him." They're the ones messing up this city, right? Mm-hmm. 
which is one thing you're messing up New York. And it's like, cool, whatever. Some private corporate Elon Musk type dude is going to come in, be super corrupt, rebuild the whole thing. But you're destroying thousands of year old historical sites. You know, what the heck? You know, if you're going to destroy them, you got to bomb them from like orbit, right? You can't be there just smashing a giant Ant-Man knockoff thing into them. I have several notes that uh, boil down to they're effing this city up, right? And uh, yeah. they are like, I'm like, how big is this city? Because they've destroyed at least half of it, right? Mm. Also, if they're at their point, right? These, these, these military dudes coming to get this kid, right? You know? shockingly there's a twist where friend not a friend he's actually the leader of these guys that are oppressing the country i guess i don't know like he hired them to conquer the country which he's like i'll be king he's like you conquered the country couldn't he have just been like i run i own these guys that are running the country couldn't he have just been like i run the country Mm. i am the descendant of the Uh. last king i'm the king now right that seems like the now simpler you, solution. Than you got to become a cool, magic. muscly red demon dude with horns. All right. But, but what's he even didn't the point? The magic. What's the point of ruling if you're not going to you don't get horns, you know? Exactly. I, get, I, I, I see what you mean. now. But here's the thing. These guys, they're coming. They're, it's like a comical amount of soldiers appear from out of nowhere in this building. Right. They're coming out of these monster yeah. closets. You know, that's what they are in the video <laughs> games. Is there not a moment where this kid kicks a fully kitted out soldier dude like three feet in the air down a flight of stairs? Mm -hmm. Where he's at the top of the stairs and he kicks him and the guy goes flying like he's been kicked by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. (laughs) Dwayne the Wayne Johnson, yeah. And uh, I was just like, wait a second, are we about to be like, oh no, this kid is super. And it's like, nope, he is, nope, it's just that stunt man went for it, I guess. I don't, but he, this man goes flying no. so far from a kid kicking him, which it didn't just tumble down the stairs. He was in the air and fell on top of other guys. Right? You probably don't remember. It's been a while, but I just can't tell you. I just remember he was he hiding in the vent and then the soldiers started flooding his house, like the hallways and the corridors of the building. And then he's like, I should probably leave this vent. It was like, bro, what? <laughs> You had a great hiding spot. What are you doing? He makes it out as fine. Also, okay, I have another gripe. Yeah. You talked about red muscly uh, demon guy. Yeah. Okay. You know, which, you know, the demons, by the way, those are like biblical demons. I'm pretty sure they were on the list. Okay? Oh, wow. Just so you know, I'm pretty sure that's what we're dealing with. Um, so how do your readings show that it's Sabak? Which is like, how do you know what that is? How do your readings show that? And what do you... Wh- you know, Wikipedia is very fast. It doesn't takes no time. And maybe it's plugged into Twitter. Someone's like tweeting out like, I think the Bach is here. <laughs> that it's like, you know, mines the data, loads it up. You're good to go. You know, <laughs> it's very much like uh, it's like in Star Trek when they're like, this, we're reading this energy signature. It's like, cool. I accept that you're in the future. You get this tech. This is a thing where one dude tried 5,000 years ago to do this and failed. So how do you have <laughs> any baseline for what this guy is? You, I would yeah, have made yeah, more yeah. sense if they're like, I don't know what this is. But instead, they're like, no, we're going to say the name of the demon by name. We're going to name him. Like, oh, like, oh, yeah. Remember last week when we were fighting the Sabak? Yeah, it's the same readings. And it's like, cool. If you had a time where you got the readings and you beat him. Why did you just go in guns blazing thinking you could beat the guy? That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. I, look, you talked about it earlier. Why are they blazing guns in the first place? We've established your guns are not working. All right. Save but there's your bullets. the hero guns. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, I just I know one thing. And this is my final fun fact for the movie. Give it to me. In 2017, Jordan Peele was offered to direct this film. Cool. And he said, I don't particularly enjoy superhero movies, and I would hate to take that opportunity from someone who is really passionate about them. Which is like, that's a classy move. He's like, well, you know, I would feel bad if, uh, you know, someone else didn't get a chance to do one who really likes him. Isn't that what a sweet boy, you know? Yeah, he's a, he's a good boy, you know. We all love him. Uh, you know, and, but you know, 
and then we got this movie. It's a good one. I do like this movie, right? It's a, I like, I stand by that. I think this is better than most of the other DC movies. Um, I like that. I made a note saying they didn't have doors back then. And then like 15 minutes later, Dr. Fate busts out with the exact same thing. Like you didn't have doors back then. And he's like, of course we did. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, just my, who, so who was your favorite of the super of the hero team? Of course we had, I forgot about that. <laughs> of course we had doors. Yeah. No, that's the good one. Who was my favorite one of the hero team, right? Of them coming in. Cause I mean, we, they're like all, knockoff you could argue they're all knockoffs of the marvel characters but i felt like they they did a good job of making them of dealing with that and making them good like good casting good costume i don't know i i don't know who my favorite was dr fate is pretty great um but i really enjoyed the comic relief of uh adam smasher i don't know probably dr fate dr fate's pretty awesome yeah I think he was, yeah, he's my favorite. I like the cast. I think he had the best casting too, like the most perfect cast. Yeah. I would like how, uh, I do think it was funny. I have my note here. They brought Adam Smasher because it's, it's Black Adam, Adam Smasher. Yeah. Ah. Anyway, um, they also had the Mexican standoff, which I feel like it's moments like that where I was like, that's where I felt the most, where I was like, this movie's been in production for too long. Why? Because it references a movie that was made in the 60s in Italy? It's not just that. It's like, what? I was just like, this scene is like, it feels like it was written when the whole movie had a much like, like a different tone. But this was the funny moment. But now it's like the movie overall is much better written than I'm sure the original, you know, copy of it was. And then uh, this is like stayed in there. Uh, Yeah. I can't, there were a couple other scenes. I wish I'd like written them down specifically that uh, I felt that really clearly where it's like a few dialogue choices or a few, you know, just a few moments like where I felt like they were pulled out of an earlier standard of comic book movies. Yeah. But the movie overall was at the current standard, you know, which is funny because it's getting such bad reviews that. uh, Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, it was kind of a weird pick for a director too, because so the director is from Spain originally. Mm-hmm. He also directed the Dwayne Johnson movie Jungle Cruise, mm-hmm. kind of random. And but you know he did the Shallows. Um, is that the one I'm thinking of? Is that the Blake Lively one? Yeah, yeah. So he directed the Blake Lively's The Shallows, um, Orphan, House of Wax. So I don't know, kind of a weird kind of an odd pick for a director but i mean jungle cruise is decent and so is this This is pretty good yeah i will say i'm pull, i'm looking at the scores and it is interesting because like rotten tomatoes 39 percent what did you want to guess sorry <laughs> you can guess no nah, you're fine score. you're fine go ahead go ahead i was just you i'm, wanna, I'm ready i'm you ready for hazard, the big reveal you want to hazard a guess at the audience so 85 critics giving it 39 you're thinking the audience uh, is five audience 85 yeah Eighty nine percent. Ocho Cinco, if you eighty nine. Yeah, there you 89. go. Um, and then you know, like uh, Meta scores a similar like spread on uh, critics being real down on it, users really liking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting that it's one of those where I think this is a really fun movie. Like it's it's a good, it's a like I uh, I ended up buying it to watch it. Um, when yeah. it's available, and it was like, oh, you could rent it for. Um, twenty dollars or buy it for twenty five, and I was like, I'll go ahead and buy it, and I w- didn't want to. I was like, I feel like I'm gonna regret this, and I'm glad I did because it's. I'm definitely gonna rewatch it. I did just notice it. Com- the trailer started playing, and I realized um he never punches the wing off of a fighter jet in the movie, which is always a oh, big thing. No, he did. Did he? I saw him do it. I remember it in the movie. Why are they scrambling fighter jets in this movie? I don't know. And helicopters. I thought I I don't know. I thought I remember seeing it in the thing, but I don't know. I do I do want to hear what you uh what you would rate this movie. I'm quite curious. Uh 
I'm I'm kind of stuck between two. So I'm I'm going back and forth, you know, because I like I feel like it's different. Um, you know, it, that's the problem with this with our rating system. I always seem to I always have a hard time thinking: Do I want? Am I rating this as like how good of a movie it is, or how much I liked the movie? It's well, I mean, you know, you got to do what's right for you. But for me, it's a combination of both. It's like, okay, let's talk camera. about how rain, how they forecast rain. You know, they give you a percentage mm-hmm. of what you're likely. It's it's how much rain you're going to or what the likelihood of rain is going to be and how much of that area it's going to cover in rain. It's both. All right. It's a by factor, whatever you want to call it. OK, that's how I feel. I think it's how good a movie was it, but also how much do you enjoy it? Because there's some movies that are like very good that I didn't enjoy that much. So that, you know, it kind of levels out what they get. But I think what do you so do you the, want me to go first? No, so I, I think I got it. On. I think I got it. So I think um, there just so there were a few moments that it didn't quite sit with me as well as, you know, like like I said, they feel like they were left out of an earlier version of the script. But I do think this is the best that the DC is put DC universe is put out. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is go for a, a B plus. I wanted to do a minus, but I feel like it B plus. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'm, I'm torn. I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put it because you know what? Let hard. me change it. A minus. Here's why Cody. Can Ooh. I give you a reason why? Yeah. Because why. Cody, sometimes the world doesn't need heroes. Sometimes it needs monsters. All right. Ooh. In any movie that has that quote, I'm loving it. All right. They didn't say it, but they implied it. <laughs> they, but yeah, we all know that comes from my favorite movie go. of all time, Dracula Untold. Sometimes all the right. world needs monsters, Cody. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, I lo- I went. I had to go to my 2022 movie list to see mm-hmm. where this ranks because I thought I had put it on there. But I forget all the time to put movies on here. Anyway, so I hadn't had it listed, so I had to book it in, and I had to look at what else I've seen this year and where they all fall. And, you know, in the same vein of this, I'm looking at movies like Bullet Train, Vengeance, Prey, The Black Phone. You know, solid movies. I don't, they don't fall in an A for me, but they're good ones. I, were, I, I think I might, I, might, I might give it a B-. minus. Go B and minus. I, it almost turned to B, but just looking back on it, I mean, some of the CG was a little wonky, and I really didn't think the ma- the human characters quite fell. You know, the slow mo was was, if we're being honest, like overused. You know, mm-hmm. I think, I think, um, but regardless, I still did enjoy the movie quite a bit, um thought it had a lot of juice and I did enjoy, you know, a lot of the fighting and the quips and all that. So I don't know. I give it a B minus solid showing. I still would take the suicide squad birds of prey or Shazam over this. But aside Mm -hmm. from those three movies, it's probably next for me on the DCEU list, you know? Yeah. See, I think this one for me is just above Shazam. Like I liked this one a little bit more than Shazam but it is very much Mm -hmm. like I think Shazam is Mm -hmm. showing like if I was the DC universe, I would like in this, they're like weird half reboot that they're trying to go through right now. Yes. You know, not only their movies not doing well, but they're also some of their stars are doing weird stuff. Right. No, like I think I would kind of try to hang. I would be like, all right, Shazam is our iron. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to start with Shazam. We're going to build the universe from them. Like, Oh yeah, no, no. Of course we've got, uh, Superman, but like that you want to Superman or Batman, you want them to be your Iron Man. But I think hanging it on Shazam right now is probably your best bet because they're like seem to be mm-hmm. the most loved well, movies. Shazam is yeah, of all the ones I've over the last five years, I think Shazam is the one that has the most juice and had the best reviews and people seem to enjoy it. I haven't heard anyone say a bad thing about Shazam. Everyone seemed to enjoy it that I've talked to. Yeah. Whereas Plus, like Birds of Prey was great. But also nobody saw it, you know, and th- the Suicide Squad was awesome. And uh, most people I talked to saw thought it was awesome, but it was a very hard R comedy, you know, so mm-hmm. it just 
that doesn't have the juice to base your extended yeah. cinematic universe off of. Which I'd almost, I almost Although, hope they have like two sides to the universe where maybe they yeah. reference each well, other, but they're separate. With James Gunn being at the helm now, I forget, he's going to be co-chairing it with, I forget who the other person is, but you know, James Gunn is in the driver's seat now. So I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if they didn't um, do something like that. Yeah, because then you could have like Shazam and like Superman be your more family friendly movies, right? Because they're more family friendly mm-hmm. superheroes and have like yeah. Batman maybe straddle the line between PG 13 and R. And then like the villain movies are because there's still a lot of it, you know, like have it be where you occupy the space more adult than uh, MCU. So you're not yeah. really directly having to compete against them. Because mm-hmm. then it's like the only. D- our Marvel movie you're competing against is Deadpool. And that's just one movie. Yeah. So, or one, se- one franchise. So, right. Yeah. I, I like this. I, it, it looks, it's promising for the future of the DC universe, which is kind of, it's mm-hmm. been sad to see how it get bungled so bad. Yeah. I like that they, I wonder if the, how much of the movie changed based on like the, the when the Snyder cut came out and, Mm. realizing like oh yeah no like it's better to have like a cool movie with funny moments to kind of like break up just the like non-stop michael bay action movie-ness of it yeah rather than be like no no we're gonna make a colorful funny movie out of a serious not funny movie right you know so yeah i mean they did pretty well i mean of, of everything that director's done this is one of better things and it was cool to see Dwayne the wayne get his uh get his due you know yeah um but to Is there be anything clear, else like, to you know, say about it i mean superman's definitely in the dc universe as it stands now more powerful so that's fun for them you know for him to be like i'll beat up superman a lot of people are like the, i have seen a lot of people say um the him pulling the fight point system from fast and furious is going to make it to where he can't be utilized as much as people probably want him to Cause it's going to make it where like him and Superman will realistically like never be able to be in the movie together where they're ever going to have to fight each other because the yeah. writers are going to want Superman to win. They're like, if Superman doesn't win, everyone's going to be mad, but it's in the rocks contract that he can't lose. So, yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I get that. I do. I wish that that had never happened. <laughs> Vin Diesel has messed up the movie industry for everybody. And we love him yeah. for it, all right? It's about Ugh. family, Cody. Oh, ben. Man. You know who would win in a fight? Vin Diesel would be What's going, on with, what's going on with Vin Diesel's uh, bloodshot um, comic book movie universe? That's still that cranking out? I don't know. Who knows? You well, know? I guess there isn't much else to say. No, I mean, I ticked off all my notes. Just, you know, remember, but, everybody uh, you, know, you know, reference I, Dracula Untold. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the movie. It was, it was solid. And it's yeah. got the rock and you get to see his muscles. That's yeah. It's fun. And I feel like this is one where a lot of times they just, he just, they kind of play off of him being the big giant dude and that being funny in mm-hmm. his role. Right. And I feel mm-hmm. like this is one every so often you get a role where it's like, oh no, like the rock's actually pretty good of an actor. And I do feel yeah, like this one. You can, can hold his own. Like I said, if you can stick in his his range, he's got enough in there. And um, you just put him where where you can do it. And he did it. You know, it was a good one. Yeah. So I liked it. It's better than, you know, don't listen to these critics, these nerds you out can, here. You can do worse, you know? Yeah. And well, thank you for listening to Opinion Havers. You can. Follow us and share us wherever you find your podcasts. And we're on ooh, Twitter for now. We'll see how long how long Twitter sticks around. Instagram and Facebook at Opinion Havers. You can ask us to review movies and you can look at the memes we put out and you can ask us to do movies and look at the memes we put out. All right. Until next time, watch movies. And have opinions. Here's what I propose, Cody. Everybody out here, they're mm-hmm. going to Hive. Hmm. We start, hmm. we go to Bumble. All right. That's where we <laughs> develop our following. Okay. Bumble. Bumble. Yeah. Bumble. That's what I'm mm-hmm. right. Mm hmm. 
Is that everybody like it's bee themed? Yeah. Bumble. Bumble. Yeah. Bumble the, the dating, the dating app. app. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just put a picture of Dwayne Johnson on there and be like, this is us, you know? Want to Follow chat? us on Bumble. Bumble, Twitter, friend, adult friend finder, grinder, all of them, you know? We could be, <laughs> we could set a new trend. Uh, no.